we're highlighting the work of the wonderful, esteemed painter and artist extraordinaire, Joan Duff Borer. Uh, our presentation today will be given by Marjorie Greengraff, who is um, a longtime Lerma docent and volunteer and a professor emeritus of St. Petersburg College's Fine Arts Department. Um, we are so thrilled to have so many wonderful artists and community members here in the audience today. And we're really excited to learn more, more about Joan and, uh, and the friendship that has blossomed between Marjorie and Joan over the course of doing this research. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Marjorie Greengrass. Yes, um, if you haven't been to Focus Friday, let me just tell you what this is and how we are going to proceed. Um, every month, the first Friday of the month, a piece from the permanent collection, the LIPA permanent collection is displayed for a month. So this month we have a piece by Joan Duffour. And the docent is um, suggested to research the piece that they're gonna be talking about as well as the artist. So all of us docents have done this many times, but what is really unique today and really special is that I got to pick an artist who is a member of our community, still working in her studio and willing to share all that with me. So I feel so blessed that this was the piece that I got um, to talk about. Um, as Christine said, over the last maybe six months, and I'm, I'm sort of a little bit um, like work ahead of time. I don't like doing things at the last minute. Over the last six months, I've gotten to know Joan. She was gracious enough to invite me into her home and to see her work and her studio. And during that time, we also conversed about other artists, artists that influenced her, um, artists that influenced me, books we're reading, articles. She just sent me a great article on Gargosian and you just mentioned um, Sarah and uh, YouTube videos that you and Steven have watched. I mean, it's been a real sharing experience. And unlike any other research that I have done, because you don't often have this opportunity. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Joan's work um, and it is massive. We're gonna talk about her paintings, her drawings, her weavings, her fiber art, uh, sketchbooks. Um, if anybody saw the show, did anybody see the show at Dunedin, the sketchbook show? then you know the exquisite and exciting um, sketchbooks that Joan makes. Um, and I just wanna say this, yes, come right in, come right in. Um, this is my interpretation of Joan's work. So I just wanna say that to Joan especially, um, this is not necessarily the definitive um, interpretation of the work, um, but it's mine. And so I just wanted to make that statement. Um, the other thing, I found this quote that I used many, many years ago, and I think it applies today. To marvel is the beginning of knowledge, and not to marvel is the first step toward ignorance. And I know that Joan marvels. So I think you'll agree once you see the work. Um, I don't know why we have those little writings right over her name, but we'll hopefully that's going to change. Um, a little bit of background. Um, we also found that we had a lot in common that were both from the northeastern part of the United States. Joan attended Bucknell in New York, and then she got her master's degree. Um, and what is really true about her is her love of writing, words, thoughts, and color. And we'll keep using these terms over and over. There is no test on this when I'm done, unlike other you know, talks I give to students. Um, but I do this so that after I've made a few um, slides and talked about it, you'll be reminded of some of the main key points. Um, Joan resided in upstate New York for many years, and her studio was a barn, a huge barn that she was able to paint in. And it's only been in the last couple of years that she's a permanent resident of Dunedin, and we're thrilled about that. Um, there's no way we can get rid of that. Well, I guess it's not that important, as long as it doesn't affect the images. Um, I talked to her about what her influences are, and they are many, but I just um, picked a few. Um, the 
Some of them are contemporary and some of them you probably know. So Edvard Munch, um, The Scream. This is iconic. We all know this painting. This is one of the um, artists that she said influences her work. Um, Kirchner, and you'll see the use of color, the free use of a paint application. And Cicely Brown, I don't know how many people are familiar with Cicely Brown. Um, she is an English artist now living in the United States and currently having a retrospective at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, one of the things that I love about Cicely Brown's paintings, and they're quite huge, you don't really get the um, scale on this, um, is that there's like little hidden gems in there. And sometimes people said they're even a little bit erotic um, and lush. The paint is so lush when it's applied. So is this going to work? Does it work on the screen? Yeah, okay. There, there it goes. But there is the figure. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. Um, Self-portraits are something that many artists do. But as I talk about and show you Joan's work, you're gonna see how unique her take on everything is. And I just saw this painting, I think it was last month when I was at your house, she pulled this out for me. It is a self-portrait, but it is a painting on a painting. This little area in here, and I have a close up of it, is applied to the background. So there is um, a painting on a painting and here it is. And I'll also be talking about the importance of drawing in her paintings. And you can see all of the linear work that goes into um, establishing her self-portrait, as well as the color. I use a lot of these terms over and over because I think it's really important to understand, but how drawing is incorporated and how color and tone um, encapsulate other parts of the work. So this blue line and this um, sort of cobalt blue that's right by that orange, it just vibrates. It's so much of a song in the self-portrait. Um, Marlene Dumas is another influence and her use of measuring. Um, okay, so we're gonna start to actually see some of the paintings. Um, Joan paints in oil on stretch canvas. A lot of the paintings have a red underpainting. I don't know, Joan, if you use um, red gesso or you just use red paint, red paint. Um, a lot of artists do put a color over the white canvas and it gives you something to play against. And red is just exquisite. And so you'll see, you know, the peeking through of colors. Um, drawing, we're gonna just go to some drawings because this, this was just, I think this really um, captures the spirit and the personality of Joan. And I had never seen anybody do this before. So she had these little cartoons from um, Jules Pfeiffer, the cartoonist, and she glued them to her drawing paper before the drawing. So you have these sheets of paper with these little cartoons on there. And then she and her partner, Stephen, go to the Morian on Saturdays and do the life drawing class. And so she's doing these life drawings and she's not quite sure where the little guy is going to end up. So this interaction of the cartoon and the traditional drawing, um, which is goes back centuries where artists would draw from the model. Um, you know, there he's just viewing the, the model. How sweet is that? <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, he's he's just enjoyable. And I mean, we could see the paper colors a little different. So we know that it's implied and not applied, not um, part of it. The other thing that I mentioned in the paint, but it's also true of all the drawings, is how these shaded areas, these washes of gray support the line work. And I think that only a painter would do. I mean, it's a very um, strong and important part of her drawings, that they're not just linear, they're also shapes as well. Here's the little guy. It's like, where's Waldo? You know, it's like a, a fun little um, game that you can play, um, where's Waldo? Um, I think her drawings are the epitome of artist drawings. They're fresh, um, the line work is exciting, there's a variety of line work and it captures the moment. And I think that is um, 
really important when you're looking at the drawings. The drawings, the sketchbooks, I don't want to make them any less important than the paintings. I think that they are strong and important in themselves. Um, this is her drawing of her partner, Stephen, who I must say is himself a great painter and a wonderful sculptor. Just give you an idea. Of little hard to look at yourself in the drawings at this scale, yeah. Um, the painting, this one has a special meaning to me because my mother's name was Charlotte. Um, but you're, again, throughout the, the images that I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see the combination of incredible use of color, um, drawing, and the elements and principles of design, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, one of the things that I do that Joan does, and we just kept finding all these commonalities, is keeping colored paper, boxes of colored paper. Now yours are much more organized than mine. And she said she got a lot of these at the Trashy Treasures Dunedin days. Um, so I'm gonna um, have to go there next time. Um, but using bits of color to see where she needs another color or even as a color scheme to get started. She might often work with these color aid pages. And the color aid paper is just fabulous to work with. Um, hollyhocks, a lot of these images will be of a floral nature, but some of them are more abstracted than others. Um, when we talked about the elements and principles of design, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, it's pretty easy for others. It's things like line, line direction, verticals, horizontals, diagonals. It's about balance, balancing darks and lights and solid with more um, worked areas. And these, it's not like the artist sits there and goes, well, I think I need a vertical line and I think I need a mass. After you've done this for a number of years, it is intuitive, but it takes a lot of thought. You have to spend as much time just looking at your piece as making it. Um, blue tulip. One of the things I noticed, and I watched the PowerPoint that I put together several times, is this sort of inverted flower. So it takes the um, sweetness of a bouquet of flowers and turns it on its head, literally, um, to become something else, to become a form and a shape and a color. Um, and I just kept really um, being so excited about this combination of blocks of color and then agitated areas of color. I think that balance is very exciting in her work. This is a triptych that is really quite, quite amazing. Um, each piece could of course stand on its own, but um, put together, it just becomes a longer dialogue. And um, one of the things that I was told when I studied painting is that the corners are really important, what happens in the corners. And so all these little things that are happening in the corners push your eye in. And so you can't really discount what's happening as the edges of the paintings sort of talk to each other. Flutter. Um, this is one, and I really wish we didn't have the words, but what can we do? We can't do anything about it. Um, some of the images are more um, recognizable, others not. And I talked to Joan about how does she title her pieces? And it's not that easy. You have to think about it. So by using the word flutter, Maybe we are more looking for these bird images that are in there. Um, maybe it's just the flutter of paint colors and marks flitting across the canvas. Um, but I do see birds in there, if that's important for you. It's not important for me. I think it's everybody brings to the table what they want. Um, P and E, they're just lush, right? I mean, I see people smiling. This is good because these are so enjoyable. And when you see them in person, it's even better. Um, oil on canvas with blue structural lines. I, mean, I really wish this worked because why doesn't it work? No, I just put the batteries in. See, it doesn't work on the screen, but it works on the wall. That doesn't help me much. <laughs> Okay, that's that's a technological thing, I think. I think you have to have your laser pointer in your computer to, to do it. I don't know. 
Anyway, I just wanted to point out repetition is also important. Am I blocking anybody? No, sir. Okay, so in this upper left corner, we have these rectangles, almost window-like forms. And they are more obvious here because, again, of contrast, the yellow against the gray. And then they become very subtle here where it's gray against gray or black against gray. And then this is forming another window. And if you look really carefully here, it's like another little painting. Maybe it's a flower pot. Maybe it's another still life within the whole painting. I mean, this is just so unique to use the materials the way that she uses them um, to more or less give the viewer some clues perhaps and allow you to make the story yourself. This one is reflections. Um, Comforts of the Sun, I think, has more literal pieces in it than some of the others. But even then, they are um, obscured in a certain way. So the chair that we know is there is obscured by the blue marks. And maybe this is a frame or something with ornate um, woodwork. Um, and I don't know how carefully you can see this, but all these shapes just fit together like puzzle pieces. Again, the pieces of paint, sometimes paper, sometimes drawing, um, and bringing our eye to this center image. Yellow Sofa. I mean, what a great title for this piece because again, you have to search. And do you even care that there's a yellow sofa? Or is it just this incredible combination of marks, of lines, of drawing, um, obviously a vase of flowers, but so, so much more. And that's what I really appreciate about her work, that each time you look at a piece, and I've looked at these multiple times, you find something else. And to me, that is a really great piece of art. If you can come back to the work and find something else, then I know that it has real value. If you see it all at once and there's nothing more to see, not so much. Um, so just to, um, I, I'll read it from my notes because you can't see it all. Just to sort of recap, you know, that's the teacher in me. Um, now I would say at this point, if it was a class, you should write this down. You may see this on a test. Um, the use of flat paper and drawing lines incorporated into the painting, how one color butts next to another and the spacing between the colors is important. Collaging images and color with medium, so you use like gel medium, to give dimension to the work. Her paintings meld all the aspects of her work, drawing, collage, painting. The merging process is dependent on imagination and chance. Imagination and chance, there is something, but with a painter's eye. And that's what really pulls it together, with a painter's eye. You have to know when to leave it and when to work more. Um, so here, the, the paper, the drawing, all the things that we've been saying. Joan also did some textile work. And just last month, there was a great exhibit at the Mor at the Dunedin, well, not the Morian, the Dunedin, um, on fiber art. And two of Joan's very large pieces, I think they're almost as big as this, um, were in that collection. And Joan was married to someone who was in the technical field and would have little pieces, metal pieces, I don't know if they were transistors or things like that, that she wove into her fiber art. Um, again, an artist's eye, someone who's always looking and finding the beauty and the importance in everything that she encounters. And here's another piece. Okay, the journals. I think I fell in love with Joan's work when I first saw the journals. And that was at a show at SPC Clearwater Campus several years ago. And I had never seen anyone make a binding from a rubber tire. <laughs> so this was, again, finding the use, the beauty in the everyday. Um, these journal pages could be, and are, they are, works on the finished of themselves, but they're also impetus and ideas for the paintings. Um, so some of the journal pages were, will have text, drawings juxtaposed with color. Um, I don't know if you can see, well, yeah, it's pretty clear, Hess, Ava Hess. 
Um, and then there's some other calligraphy at the bottom. These are some other journal pages. I particularly like this one. I think I took the picture of this in your house. Yeah, in her house. And I just want to segue for one minute. When I say Joan's house, when you walk into Joan's house, you are in a painting. The whole house is her studio. The whole house is her art world. Um, there's big tables set up in the front room that she draws on. Um, and then as you go into the house a little more, there's a huge glass window that overlooks the garden that's filled with exquisite plants, Stephen's pottery. Um, it's a painting unto itself, and I would assume a lot of inspiration. So she is living the whole art experience. Um, some people say that some artists are artists artists. I've used that term and I wasn't quite sure what it meant, an artist artist. Um, so I found this definition and I don't know if it's the definitive definition, but these people who art possesses some strange brilliance and idiosyncratic foresightedness that their fellow creatives cannot resist. So I could not resist talking about this work. Which brings us to First Friday and Requiem, um, which is the charcoal drawing here. And I've shown you some of her smaller drawings, but there was a time in the 90s, particularly, where Joan worked on really large charcoal drawings. And um, this was one of them. And I'll just point out a few things. Besides the um, brilliant dark mass that she's formed here, and the calligraphic drawing lines, which you saw in her other drawings and in some of her paintings. Um, there's also this erasure. You can use the um, charcoal eraser, either a hard eraser or a needy eraser, to actually make marks and to take things away, to take some of the charcoal away and give another value. So she's done that here. Um, this particular piece is called Requiem. And Joan did this in 1998. And it was suggested by several people that this was a tribute to her son who passed away when he was 21. Um, they were on a family vacation and he had a seizure and passed away. So a very heartbreaking and difficult time, but the drawing was done many years later. And Joan doesn't even know if it was just something that came out of her psyche, her mind, but it wasn't done as expressively for that particular event. Um, although, you know, you, knowing that, you can say that there is a figure that's probably depressed, saddened, and then maybe um, a body that's lying here. But again, knowing how Joan works, it was more like, okay, I've got these verticals and now I need a horizontal. I have this massive black area and I need something to balance that. Um, I have a hard edge. I need a softer edge. Now, not that you want to dissect every piece in this manner, but it does make you understand the process that artists go through as they're developing a piece of work. And um, this Focus Friday piece is really quite powerful and it will be on display for a whole month. So you can come visit again. And thank you so much. <laughs> I can't tell you how pleased I am with how you interpret my work oh, thank because you. that doesn't always happen. Uh, people who are in positions like yours um, understand certain things, but you seem to understand very much the way I think. And you don't meet somebody like that too often. So I'm complimenting you. Thank you. Thank you. When you like, I have a love relationship here. Yeah. <laughs> and she's a teacher and she knows how to project. <laughs> I've been a teacher, I've taught children, and I still uh, value my time. I had more fun with them. I became a child than I taught. Mm -hmm. And if you taught children, uh, they are the naturals. And 
you listen to him. I I treasure that time. And any of you who teach, I have somebody here goes from those teach. I know what he's dealing with. And so, and of course I met Stephen and I did bring a book yes. that Stephen did in his brilliance when we first met about 04 or something like that. And he was doing computer stuff and he did a, a book about my about me and about my work. And he used good language. I mean, he was writing words that really were the way I felt. And you don't always find somebody like that. So that was a big gift to me. My daughter and her husband are here. There he is. I, I have something to say about the journal because I just recently looked at one of her photo photograph books that she did when she was married to my dad, which was you know a long time ago. And it was just the line and the color and the words. It was just like you were describing, you know. Okay. And I thought. When I looked at it, I said, Craig, you gotta look at this. This mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. I mean, I can't say that I've ever I've put together digital things, but nothing like this. And it was really marvelous to look at it. And I'm gonna look at it with new eyes after what you said too. I will I will also say that um as a child, I and I did not go to art school, so I did not learn what I learned in traditional ways. I <clears throat> was a journalist. I was editor of my school newspaper and thought I'd be a journalist, but I always made things because I had it in me to do it. But it was all things women taught me, needlework, sewing. My fingers are all absolutely useless now. I wore them out. You saw those <laughs> stitchery things that I did. I just Use them until they wore out. I cannot sew a button on now or anything. I use glue. For everything. <laughs> <laughs> that arthritis, you know about that. Anyhow, um, it's it's really a pleasure for me to have you interpret my work. Well, thank you. And the things you picked out, I, you know, it's terrific. It's too bad about that stuff. Yeah, time. well, you know, that's technology. We just have that's to go with it. That's technology. That's not good. Works at night. But uh, this museum is a treasure, and it's not like any other museum in Pinellas. And I'm in this room looking around at wood that is outstanding. And uh, I don't know if that even so I'm glad we're all here, and um, I don't know what else I can say.